Well, I think the integrated education is very important. It's important in any country, and it's a challenge all over Europe today because all European countries are multi-ethnic. But of course, you, uh, coming out of a, a situation of conflict, it is even more important. Because I think education is actually a tool that can be used to bring people together. And it's so important to start when we are young. Uh, many of us, when we get old, we are filled with prejudices. But, and to overcome these prejudices, I think you have to start in the youth, in the childhood, and that's why integrated education is so important. You know, I think that the non-governmental side and the governmental side can work together and support each other. I think it's very important in our societies that we have a civic society that is active and, and promote uh, good causes, being it integrated education or other things, because they can have some grassroots involvement, which is important. But at the same time, there is no doubt that we need a governmental guidance. We need a governmental policy that directs uh, the overall, in this case, then, education system. And that's why I was very happy when I visited um, uh, Skopje about a year or a little bit more than a year ago in order to present this integrated education strategy that then the government at that time actually had uh, supported and adopted. This, of course, is difficult. I understand that in a, in a country like, like yours. But what I'm trying to tell my interlocutors is that Integrated education does not mean giving up anything. It's actually adding something. It's not that I'm losing part of my identity. I think mother tongue education is very important. It should be there. But at the same time, I need to be a part of the overall society. And we have to find mechanisms so that the different ethnic groups can have common space. And as you yourself said in your question, very often, we have seen that if there had been incidents of violence or incidents of tension, you, the easy solution is to divide the school or have different shifts according to ethnic lines or whatever, so that we separate people. And of course, that may be a solution for the short term, but in the long run, it of course will be detriment to any kind of cohesion of the society. A unified, a strong society cannot live if we have parallel societies. And that's why we hope, through my work, our work, with the government to promote this. But I think also then non-governmental organizations, the civic society, like in this case the Nansen Dialogue Center, but others, you have Mosaic, you have other schools and projects, can actually help because they can show examples of how this is working. And I think this is so important that this is not only theory, it's not only fantasy, but it's working. And that will give some reassurance to parents and to local authorities that, okay, let's try this. Well, first of all, I would like to say that I think we have seen quite a positive development in the Balkans. If we go back to the 90s and you remember what a catastrophe happened to the Balkans at that time, I think it is wonderful to see that we have moved forward that we have managed to establish peace, that we are rebuilding societies and creating space for everyone to, to, to develop their own future. That is one thing. But at the same time, coming out of conflicts like the Balkans have suffered, there is a lot of legacy there. And I think what we have to be aware of is that the reasons or the, the scars, so to say, of these conflicts, they don't go away automatically. And that's why I think the early warning mandate in my work is important. Because we can try then to detect tendencies, trends, situations that can derail this positive development. And through the, both with a dialogue with the different national governments, we can make the governments aware of these tendencies that we see and we think that they should try to counteract. And through also the OSCE in Vienna, we can alert the organization as such so that we all can work to find a solution to this so that we don't have a repetition or a, if not a repetition, but anyway, that we destroy what has been built over the years after the wars in the Balkans.
I do hope that we can avoid, and I think we can manage to avoid a new, wars in, a new war in the Balkans. But um, I think it is very important that both the national governments, first and foremost, but also we as the international community, then look for how can we create integrated societies. Because it's only through a situation where everyone has a stake in the society, feels an ownership to the country at where they live, that we can avoid this type of conflict. I felt that very strongly when I myself was working back in 1993. I was working in Croatia with the then so-called Kraina Republic and the, and the Croatian government. And I think one of the problems there was that people felt that they had nothing to lose from starting a war. Of course, they had something to lose because they lost even the little they had, they realized. But the feeling of, of lack of ownership, the feeling of marginalization, the feeling of frustration is very often at least the cause for tension and it can also lead, lead to something more serious. And that's why I think the governments should do it their utmost to include everyone through language, through education, through jobs, through cultural integration into the society. And, and it, this is important for all of our countries in Europe today. And we have the same danger or challenges, you may say. But of course, in countries and societies that come out of a war, that are a post-war society, these tensions are even more dangerous than in, in, in more stable societies. 